it's a hard job. I know it is. <laughs> Living snow is not the easiest thing to do. But I also have a simple question. Why am I seeing a pickup with a blade on it going down a dry chunk of street with sparks flying? I seen them yesterday come off of Division, turn on the Grand, and then turn into this parking lot, and not moving any snow whatsoever. So, I, I, I know it's a hard job, and I know people are questioning why it's done this way or not done this way, and I know this little snowstorm was little compared to what we've had in the past. So I just didn't know how we can improve it as citizens. Can we help public works out? I don't know. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. Action items. Resolution 2019-35, a resolution of the Board of Trustees of the Town of Flatville summarizing revenues and expenditures for each fund and adopting a budget for calendar year 2020. Mr. Reagan. It is a matter of resolutions for the budget for sure. Uh, in this resolution, you have a copy of the budget. Budget. In my report to the board, I highlight several aspects of the budget I want to point out to the board. Uh, overall, it was a pretty decent year, ending with almost $3 million in the general fund, overall with cash reserves. Uh, total budget just around, just under over $24 million total through all the funds. Um, this Resolution is that is the one that actually adopts the budget for 2020. There are other resolutions are important as well. This is the one that you formally adopt for 2020 operating capital budget. Uh, we've gone over this in the last three months. I don't really have anything else to add at this point. Uh, unless you have any questions based upon my comments in my manager report when I talk about the different aspects of the budget. Questions, comments, concerns, anything further? All right, I'm going to mention the motion. Oh, question, please. Um, yeah, and the salaries, do uh, they reflect the action of the board at the previous, previous meeting regarding the pay increase? It did. It, it does. I'm sorry. There were, what David Green did is he built in a full 4% across the general fund and in the large sewer fund as well. It's, it's unlikely all employees will receive that based upon the evaluation, but that's how we do it. You just be conservative, yeah, but it does. Right. Any other questions? I'm going to turn the motion. Oh, Move to approve resolution 2019-35, resolution of the Board of Trustees of the Town of Platteville summarizing revenues and expenditures for each fund and adopting a budget for calendar year 2020 as presented. Second. I have a motion and multiple seconds. Mary Fling of the Lake, please. <coughs> Carol Leggett. Yes. Nick Ralston. Aye. Spencer Bradman. Aye. Troy Blum. Larry Clark. Aye. Hope Morris. Yes. All right. Motion carries. Thanks for all the hard work on that. Uh, resolution 2019-36, the resolution of the Board of Trustees in the Town of Flatville appropriating sums of money to the various funds and spending agencies in the amount of and for the purposes set forth below for 2020. Mr. Rankin. Similar to the prior, previous resolution, this one, uh, now that you adopt the budget, this one, as, as you indicated, appropriates funds uh, throughout the budget accordingly. The general fund, the special revenue funds, the, the two enterprise funds, the perpetual care funds. Really no different than the previous resolution, but this is another formal action we're allowing those funds to be spent on a question. Questions, comments, concerns? I 
I move to approve uh, resolution 2019-36, resolution of the Board of Trustees of the Town of Platteville, appropriating sums of money to the various funds and spending agencies in the amounts of for the purpose set forth below for 2020 as presented. All right, I have a motion and a second. Can I roll call, please, Mary? Nick Ralston. Aye. Spencer Bradman. Aye. Troy Blum. Larry Clark. Aye. Hope Morris. Yes. Carol Leggett. Yes. All right, motion carries. Resolution 2019-37, a resolution of the Board of Trustees of the Town of Platteville levying general property taxes for the year 2019 to help defray the cost of government for the Town of Platteville, Colorado for 2020. Mr. Richards. Thank you. Uh, as you can see, the property tax uh, valuation did go up. The Will County Assessor's Office sent out last week the final valuation. <coughs> last year, the town of Flatville uh, had a total taxable assessed valuation of $37,853,000. This year, going to next year, it has increased to $44,497,230. So it did increase uh, by $7 million. So what that comes out to, uh, there's a formula we use to basically calculate your mill levies, which is our 18.385 times the 44,497 and 230, which comes up with your amount of general, uh, basically your property tax that you receive or receiving the general fund. And per a long-standing agreement, one mill goes to the library district, to the Platteville Library, which is 44,498, uh, leaving the town a Revenue estimate of seven hundred seventy-three thousand five eighty-four for the general fund. Um, highlighting on the just briefly on the the mill for the library, uh, that's been long-standing agreement before my time. Uh, in return, the local citizens that reside in Platteville don't pay the additional mill levy for the High Plains Library District. The town is then offsetting that cost for our citizens. And the town does assess the library district almost 30000 for administrative fees because we do all the financials. So uh, it's a pretty good deal, in my opinion, when it comes to the library district. And uh, we haven't had any disagreements for many, many years. So uh, by doing this, uh, you are certifying mill living. If you don't do so, we'll kind of hold our property tax. So I would strongly suggest we certify the mill living tonight. <laughs> all right, questions, comments, concerns? I move to approve resolution 2019-37, resolution of the Board of Trustees of the Town of Platteville, levying general property taxes for the year 2019 to help defray the cost of government for the Town of Platteville, Colorado for 2020 as presented. Second. I have a motion and a second. Roll call, please, Mary. Spencer Bradman. Aye. Troy Blum. Larry Clark. Aye. Hope Morris. Yes. Harold Leggett. Yes. Nick Ralston. Aye. All right, motion carries. Beautiful. Resolution 2019-38, a resolution of Board of Trustees of the Town of Platteville, Colorado, establishing town holidays for 2020. Mr. Rankin. Thank you. First, I want to thank the Board for adopting the budget. It's probably one of the most smooth processes we've been, I've ever experienced, so thank you for that. It's nice that we all get along, even yeah. though we may disagree. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Betty. Uh, Mary came up uh, the, the town clerk. One of her jobs is to establish the town holidays per what the board authorizes. The board authorizes through our municipal code 11 paid holidays. So as you can see, the standard New Year's presents been on all day, 4th of July, uh, which we're, we will be closed on the 3rd to give a three-day weekend. Of course, Labor Day, Veterans Day next year. Veterans Day is on the Wednesday of the week. And then years ago, uh, the board authorized the Friday after Thanksgiving for a weekend, and in turn, we do not observe Columbus Day anymore. That was a discussion years ago. And of course, today's for Christmas, which I will actually have on the Thursday, Friday next year. So, a four day weekend. Otherwise, I don't have anything else to add unless you have any questions on the holiday schedule for the employees. Plus, they get one floating holiday, so that's number 11. 11, 11 holiday. Questions, comments, and all right, I make a motion. I make a motion to approve resolution 2019-38, a resolution of the Board of Trustees of the Town of Platteville, Colorado, establishing town holidays for 2020 as presented. 
Resolution 2019-39, a resolution of the Board of Trustees of the Town of Platteville and the Name and Town's fee schedule. Mr. Rankin. Thank you. The fee schedule you have in your packet, we're not naming every single item. I'm going to high point the ones that we are. Starting with the water fee, uh, I'm proposing a 2% increase. Sorry. No, you're fine. Uh, we have not increased water fee for many, many years, but we know we have some large capital projects ahead of us, such as a 12 to 14 inch new line coming from the tanks down to increase our, our pressure rate system. And the other big issue is so uh, next month I'm going to schedule stay sessions to talk about the raw water supply plan and look at some water solutions for the future for the growth. Uh, but regardless, uh, 2% increase, I think, is fairly nominal. On the sewer side, uh, Rob Tellis this last week sent David and I a draft update from the financial analysis. I've not given that to the board yet, but here's a draft. Uh, but it's comparing the SBR mechanical system with and without a large solar grant for a million dollars and the gross wind technology wrap system with or without a solar grant. And it ranged from 0% increase to 5%. Uh, I'm comfortable that the RAV or the gross wind will be successful. I can't guarantee it. Uh, if we, based upon the RAV study, if, we, if the RAV system gets CDPH approval for state, to, op to operate the state, and we get the minority dollar grant, we could potentially do the 0%. I'm asking the board to do a 1%, just to be a little bit more conservative. After last year's 53% increase, I don't and people will squawk a whole lot about a 1%. Um, our utility bills will be an ongoing discussion. Water and sewer have to be our main utility bills. We've had conversations about garbage pickup, street lights, and sidewalk fees. We're going to continue that conversation in the future. I don't want to drop that, but we're not there yet. We need other revenues offset those costs. So the 1% for the sewer, and that's uh, both water and sewer is usage and base rate. And then last year, the board changed our shutoff and reconnect fees for disconnects from 15 to 20. This is simply to reflect that in our fee schedule. Nothing else has changed in water and sewer, to my knowledge. Uh, going over to facility rental agreement, I've, 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 I'm asking to increase the hourly rates for local and out of town use by $5. I mean, it's still pretty cheap compared to renting a room at the Port Lincoln Rec Center or Bridge Rec Center. Um, and then sports, talking to Jan, the Recreation Senior Director. Uh, we combine all the sports except softball in one category to $60, and uh, they'll, they'll get a, a permanent t shirt that they wear that they'll take home, some more medals. And then softball costs a little more, so that was a, an increase to $70 per player. The, uh, adult sport fee, like co softball and seagull field rental, we did not increase those. In the police section, the only thing Carl, Chief Dwyer, wanted to add is uh, the body camera request, the 4 gigabyte DVD is $15 per hour. He did research and asked one of the chiefs what they were charging. And then the body camera request for research and redaction is $30 per hour. That typically only takes about an hour. So those are fairly standard from what he found out with those police departments. We did not have that. We're getting more and more of those requests because we uh, Carl actually just got the new body cams in that I had I asked him to authorize him to order. And uh, they'll hold up much better. They'll do, uh, for example, the other ones were clip-ons and were easy to uh, either not record what you're wanting to record if a fall off during the pursuit. These have these magnets that I guarantee you, you will not get them off unless you unclip the magnet. And they're tiltable. So if you have a tall officer or a short officer, you can adjust that. I mean, little simple things like that. Uh, plus, they're, they're more modern state of the art. And then the last thing is I asked Marie about the 
credit card convenience fee, I think that was 50 cents a transaction when you used to be, and we're asking to increase it to $1 per transaction that pops up with the cost. And that's more of a pass through. Uh, I'm gonna kind of toot Mary's horn today. I think she finally resolved the monthly bill uh, pay. Close. Clubs, clubs. We do, we do have an online payment. Online payment on. Function live on the website. You click on online bill pay. Um, it, this function is not for recurring payments. We wanted to start with the, the version where a customer would go in, log in their own information and make a payment and make sure that it works correctly. Um, once we have um, taken enough payments that we know that that's going to work and we can transfer all of the data um, and get it uploaded <coughs> to the right spot correctly, um, the, the next step will be the recurring payment, um, which is we're going to call auto pay. It's not really automatic because the systems won't talk to each other yet, but it will. Um, facilitated basically the same way that the bank draft auto pays are being done now, which is we get a list of all of the balances due. People sign up. Each month we go in and just change the balance and press process and they, they run. So it'll be like that. A customer will have to call in for the first time, give us their information, um, we'll set it to process the day before the due date. Go in each month and change the balance so that they're paying the full amount due and process those payments each month. So it'd be basically automatic as far as the customers are concerned. Behind the scenes. If in the future we, we see that it's working well and we have enough volume, um, I may come to the board and ask for the money to pay for the, the computer programming that it will take to make it fully automatic. Um, the, the express bill pay system upgraded um, to meet our bank's concerns. Um, so that's not the direction we started, but it's gonna work out for us and people will um, we'll have a site that they're used to seeing. I think that'll be good for them. Um, but it, Express and Assist don't interface at all. So we would have to pay Assist to make that interface possible. How much is that? Uh, I don't have a, an exact quote. I would say in the neighborhood of $7,000. Not cheap. So you can see why we want to double the community fee. To a dollar. But uh wow. the fee for the online pay option. Excuse me? The fee for the online pay option as well then? It will be for any credit card. Well, I don't know, that's up to you. In the past we've we've not charged the convenience fee to the folks who make the effort to come in to the office and pay with a credit card. And I don't know the thought process that went into that decision. It's been like that as long as I've worked here. Yeah, I remember that conversation that the board at the time felt like, if you're coming in, it's actually not a convenience, it's a light charge, you're actually making the effort to come in. Right. If you want to pay off-site, it's considered convenient, and that's when you would charge it. Well, that was the thought process back in the day. Yeah. The, the, I, I know it's named convenience, but regardless of how a <laughs> credit card transaction takes place, there's a service charge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. That will be a future discussion. Oh. And the, the assist software program, I, I know it's been a six month transition with some bumps in it, but just remind me, we, we began this process, Mary researched it, and we proposed it this last year because. Uh, Cassell was getting it pretty pricey, over about 20,000 a year. We only budgeted, what, five to 8,000 this year for assist, I believe. So it's long term, it's going to save significantly. So we just have to work out the bumps to like the online auto pay. 
And that seven thousand roughly will be a one time cost, right? For the for the program. So we have a good another good financial year will be coming to you about that conversation. But otherwise, as far as the fee schedule, we do an annual review and update. Now, these are the, the ones I'm promoting for the board to approve during this uh, uh, resolution in 19 29. Any questions you may have? We've been having trouble getting kids to register for the recreation programs. Why raise the fees? Part of it is the rec program, a couple of different things. Um, we looked at what other communities are charging. Everybody struggles with kids sometimes. I coached for a good 10 years since, since I've been here, not the last five years, but the first 10. There was years where we had two baseball, I was mainly baseball. We had two baseball teams, or years we barely made the team. So what I'm hearing and what I'm reading about in the last few months is nothing new. It isn't. Um, four years ago, I took my, my son out of, out of the club as an example of the program because he wanted to play club ball. He tried out the AD. But we have to pay the Greeley Evans Youth Rec League, which we have six games with no tournament. I pay 150 bucks for a cheap lime green t-shirt in six games. So I'm, you know, in, in fairness, in comparison, the fees really haven't increased for a long, long time. And they're still lower, if not very competitive to other small communities. And uh, you know, when we hired a new rec director, there was a long conversation, not with her, but every applicant I talked to, uh, really trying to make recreation as, as revenue neutral as possible. To me, that's not going to happen. Revenue's not going to pay some weight. But when you're budgeting 100 to 125,000 a year, only bringing in 25,000, you need to look at some ways realistically to offset those costs. We have the for smallest example, we have the cheapest concessions you'll find in the state of Colorado. Those prices go up a little bit next year. You know, so those are some examples. But fair question. I've had that in the last few weeks about well, are, are fees reasonable? I still think they are because I, I shop around and I look at what other towns do. United Way provides a grant to become a five oh two for those who need a sponsorship. We do offer scholarships and based upon me. And United Way, like the said, usually thirty five hundred to four thousand a year they'll give us. <coughs> so we don't want to deter kids from, from playing, by all means. But uh, we also do raise the fee to raise the bar to the level of uh, services we're offering. <coughs> Fair enough, and that's something uh, Jan I've talked about is each sport, what can be done differently to improve that sport, to improve the experience for both the child and the parent. And everybody's got different ideas. And yeah. granted, not to go back in time, but things were done a certain way for 20 years, and now we've gone a different direction. It's going to take some time to adjust to that. But I think we'll be successful at the end of the day. Because we have a rec director that very passionate about his job. It's just getting everybody in the community or that's just as passionate to get a her and do a team approach. You know, at least that's my ceiling conversation on that topic. And one other thing, you said you were raising the usage and the base rate by, by the 2% and 1%? Water. Uh, with that small increase, the residents aren't going to see a big dip or increase in their, in their utility bill. 53% was a gain. It doubled, like my, my, my sewer base rate doubled, obviously, for usage. And uh, ironically, the budget reflects in the, uh, the end of year estimates that you know, we're going to pretty much meet the budget still. Uh, the nice thing about doing that, if I remember, quote unquote, the, the rip off the band aid approach, <laughs> get that out of the way. And with the pilot study, it delayed construction for basically a year, but we can still stay with the compliance schedule. That'll, you know, wrap tell us basically so because of those two factors, large increases probably won't be, won't be happening anytime soon. And there could be a year or two where we don't do any increase, but we'll have to wait and see how things go. Got my fingers crossed we'll get the gross wind technology approved and we'll get a million dollar dollar grant. Well, you know, 
<laughs> Half of it. I move to approve resolution 2019-39, resolution of the Board of Trustees of the Town of Platteville, amending the town's fee schedule as presented. Second. I have a motion and a second. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Alright, motion carried. Alright, moving on to planning services, hourly fee increase. Mr. Um, Melissa Kendrick, as you well know, their town plan and last month she approached me about an increase of five dollars per hour for services. Uh, I do budget around twenty thousand a year in the planning and zoning economic portion of the budget for her to be here once a week. Uh, we, we changed that about three years ago. Uh, it's convenient for the community, especially your smaller uh, projects where people can come in on certain days, meet with them, not get charged. I used to have to charge people, which I, I thought was ridiculous. Just ask them about a building permit for a garage, make sure it gets set back. I mean, that's ridiculous. But um, Melissa's rates are still very comparable, but much lower than other planning services that I've seen there. I don't have a big qualm with it. Uh, any kind of development review that she does is past the development phase for it. So I, I don't have a, a concern with the Melissa's request and board approval. Any other comments, questions, concerns? I entertain motion. Move to approve an hourly rate increase for planning services to seventy-five dollars per hour as presented. Second. I have a motion and a second. Um, roll call, please, Mary. Troy Blum. Larry Clark. Aye. Hope Morris. Yes. Harold Leggett. Yes. Nick Ralston. Aye. Spencer Bradman. Aye. Motion carried. Purchase of a new three-quarter ton pickup for public works. Mr. Andrew, upon Mr. Well, this is a tough conversation. <laughs> uh, as you recall, recall when we established the 2020 budget, there was funds to decide the water and sewer funds equally to purchase public works vehicle. The directors had vehicles since 2005. Um, we've talked the last several years about replacing them. We didn't have yet. Uh, the other vehicles over the years have been replaced with CMAC funds. That, that grant program through CDOT is no longer available for vehicle purchases. Um, Dave was pretty excited, so we started shopping around and found out we can get some pretty good deals now if the board agreed to do so. So I'm going to let David explain what those deals are. Thank you. Um, we just did start, as Troy said, started looking around to see what was available, what was out there. Um, talked with the uh, reached out to Johnson Auto Plaza, reached out to uh, Spratly Bar Ford, and reached out to Well County Garage, the three big American automakers to get some pricing and that kind of thing. Um, didn't hear anything back from anybody at Well County Garage. Um, Johnson Auto Plaza represents both the Dodge and Chevy products down there. Um, and obviously the Ford dealer represents the Ford product. Um, the the Chevy the the Johnson didn't have any Chevrolets in the 2019 that met the criteria that we were looking for, um, and basically what we were looking for was a um, gas, not diesel, which is almost impossible to find in a three-quarter ton truck anymore. Um, but uh, for the most part, because uh, a lot of our starts and stops being in a small town, you know, going, we're not going very far, we didn't want to be firing a diesel up and shutting it down and that kind of thing on a regular basis. The rest of the fleet is gasoline already. Um, so that was one of the criteria. We were looking for a crew cab so that it can be used if we were going to a meeting or going and also enough room inside that we can put um, some of our locators or different pieces of equipment that we don't want to leave right in the back of the truck, um, either for weather or uh, for exposure that somebody would be able to easily grab. Miscellaneous reasons for that. But uh, um, what we found was, uh, number one, the 2020s, they want you to order those. They don't want to sell the one that's on the lot. It's a 2020 right now for the most part because they want to sell the ones that are on the lot to the customers that want a brand new 2020 versus, and so there would be a 16 to 22, 23 week order delay 
if we ordered one in January 1st for 2020. Um, plus, the price increase between both of them was somewhere between 3 and 4 percent is what they would be going up uh, to order the 2020 versus buying a 19. And their bosses are happy to have them try and get the 19s off the lot. So they were willing to make a little more of a deal than they were for the 2020s. Um, the, what came, I, I gave you sheets uh, from both the Ford and the, the Dodge, or from Johnson and from Spradley Bar, so that they were easier to look at because what went out in your packets last night was one from um, Johnson Auto Plaza that he emailed me late last night after I'd already sent it to Mary and said, never mind that first bid I gave you, it doesn't have everything on it that you were looking for. And part of what we were looking for was a vehicle that um, could easily be uh, pulled into the fleet, add a plow to it if we need to, come with a plow prep package, the skid plates underneath, the trailer package, um, those type of items. So with the plow package, we normally get the heavier duty amp uh, uh, or alternator. Um, we typically put a block heater on it. Uh, because the three-quarter ton truck sits a little higher, we typically add grind boards to them so they're easier to get in and out of, a little bit safer, especially if it's during a storm, that kind of thing. Um, the Ford did have uh, the rear window defrost. The upfitter switches, Ford builds those in um, to this package. They built it in so that uh, um, when we add auxiliary lighting to it, you don't have to have extra holes cut in the dashboard or anything like that to, to put those. So the Dodge doesn't come with the rear defroster, the upfitter switches, or the parking sensors. And the parking sensors were just something that was on the Ford. It wasn't something that we were requiring. It was just something that was part of the package because they were bidding a package that already had that. Um, the rest of our fleet, with the exception of one vehicle, is Ford already. There's $130 difference between the two bids, but because of the uh, the rear window defroster is actually one of the options that whether I'm buying a base model or a nicer model, is something that I look for in the state of Colorado. I made the mistake a few years, well, many years ago when I lived in Oklahoma, they don't sell that as a standard option. And coming from Colorado, I didn't know that that wasn't a standard option <laughs> to, to have that rear window defrost. And uh, I, I know I use my side mirrors 99% of the time, but it sure is nice to look in the rear view mirror sometimes and actually be able to see out that back window or lean over your shoulder. So um, because of what's available and what's there, I would ask the board to approve, if you're willing, um, the one from the Ford dealership at Spradley Bar in Greeley. Um, there is sufficient funds left in the water and sewer uh, because of other line items that were not either fully expended or uh, expended during the 2019 budget. So the funds are there and available if the board decides that this is the direction we want to go. If the board decides that this isn't the way we want to go, we wait until after the first of the year, that's fine as well. Instead of just spend the money now until later. Also, the, the truck David has now, the F-150, this is the F-250, three-quarter time. And I did request David to make sure that I thought we'd go home by the room. I still can't figure out how to mute that thing. Usually I push, push the volume and it'll quit. Kitchen girl. Danny's home. Oh, good. We did want to ensure that this vehicle was purchased as a fleet vehicle. It is a work truck that can be used for snowing, plowing, work sites, so on and so forth. Uh, just like the police department, the police chief has a work vehicle that's fully equipped and can be used by any officer for any reason. So um, I just want to make that clear. And I think uh, the existing pickup that's in the fleet it would not be replaced. We would use that in other capacities. Uh, Part-time seasonal help and public works. We'll use it for recreation department once we're on We just get pick up supplies. You know, we we'll, we'll go up to Bigfoot Turf and pick up some chalk for the ball field, stuff like that. So we'll still use that truck. It's just at a different capacity. So and this is David's new vehicle. Correct. And then his new, his old vehicle will be used for 
for the group to explain. Public works and rec department. Yeah. 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 It's still a good enough truck, um, but uh, it needs to be replaced. I mean, there was a philosophy years ago that we, we ran it to ran it the ground and we replaced it. You can't operate that work, I mean, you can't work that way with fleet vehicles. So it needed to be replaced a few years ago, but uh, in the last year we had Mike put a new transmission in, I believe, rebuilt, rebuilt transmission, and, and as things start building up mechanically, it's time to move on. Because public works needs to have reliable vehicles start to go just like the police department does. So, Um, strange that Will County didn't get back to you. The others are very good about getting back to people like you. <laughs> Why didn't you go to Brighton and Interstate, or yeah, Interstate 25 forward to get quotes? We've worked with Spradley the, the, We've worked with Spradley in the oh. past. Oh, okay. And worked with John Weineke up there. Oh, okay. And typically his his prices tend to be better. Um, several other dealerships usually walk out of the bid meeting when he walks in. Oh, okay. I just didn't know because Brighton's been very good about different things. And, and I just I've worked with John uh, in, 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 for at least two other purchases okay. over the years. And then. I'm glad about the Ford because Dodges have a tendency of breaking down because it's like a, yeah, buy one, get one free type of situation in Dodges, so. I'm not getting in the middle of it one way or another. I am not. I thought you said it because I was thinking. But we were going to bring that one. Again, Dodges ran. Any questions, comments, concerns? <laughs> just whatever you're comfortable with, with like, the funds are there in this year's budget, and if we can save a few bucks, then uh, actually more than a few bucks, several thousand bucks. Um, last week when I was on Thanksgiving break, David emailed me and said, can we put this on the agenda this week, and then yesterday for more consideration. Sounds like a plan. Yeah. I move to authorize the town manager to finalize the purchase of the dealership to be determined Bradley Barr for the purchase of a 2019 three quarter ton four by four pickup in the amount not to exceed $40,705. Is that 46? Specified later, a later specified total. It, it is 40,000 even though it looked like a six now. Oh, okay. So it's 40,705. And that's uh, lock, stock, and barrel. You didn't have any hidden fees. That should be sufficient. Okay. And I could just move it for like a thousand dollars less to just put you on the spot and come to the ground. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can take the new tires off with the old ones. <laughs> second. I have a motion and a second. Roll call, please, Mary. Larry Clark. All right. Hope Morris? Yes. Harold Leggett? Yes. Nick Ralston? Yes. Spencer Bredden? Yes. Tori Blum? Okay, motion carried. Thank you. Thank you. Go. 14 years. That's pretty good. Pretty good. All right. Is that your sign? Did you get your name? Get your number, no. 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 Former right. public works director did yeah. that. That's not <laughs> reason. He's a former public works director. <laughs> 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 mm -hmm. no. well, we don't first want to do it. Okay, moving on to reports. Mr. Rankin. Yeah, other than the mayor, I'm going to tonight. Uh, and Mary had the picture of the senior Lagoon bus. They were very happy. I think it's Thursday they hit off the Blackhawk and moved the bus for the first time. Nice. And I have a feeling that we're going to have more people interested in taking road trips from the senior organization than we had before. You're going to be arm wrestling. Yeah. <laughs> there was some conversation about the picking seats and stuff like that. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Should personalize the seats. <laughs> I'm happy for him. A couple of things when I met with Mike Akers and then Ann, I can't pronounce her last name, was French. Where it was, uh, she was the consultant with CDOT when they delivered the bus, and Mary and I and David finalized the transaction. Uh, came out to just over sixty-two thousand. Uh, 
we're, we were initially I was told that CDOT would remain lien holder on the title until it de depreciates down to five thousand, which would take a number of years. They changed that after five years it's ours. So we take the lien off after five years, and then uh, it has a pretty good warranty. It's a five year, hundred thousand instead of three years. So that's better than normal. So uh, it seems to be fine. David took it for a test drive with Mike and Anna and me and goes home. I told him. I won't be the first one to scratch the <laughs> And then the next day on Monday, Dave and I went over and, and uh, I just knew that garage would be too small because I did the right size door by didn't think about measuring it. David got to fit with one inch to spare, literally one inch to spare. Wow. The front, not the bumper, but the, the license plate plastic holder is literally touching the wall and you can close the door with just enough gap. Hang a tennis ball there. You know exactly. We put parking blocks in. <laughs> Aren't you supposed to be able to walk behind that thing? You can't with the garage door open. The garage door open again. <laughs> we'll work on being modifying that a little bit, but uh, not the bus, but the little bit. Take the bumper out. You guys got a welder. Make it a yeah. cab over. <laughs> I got lucky because I did not want sitting out in this last snowstorm. And it was not. It was inside. So I got lucky there. Um, got a big meet next Tuesday with uh, the new owners of West Farm. I'm looking forward to that with Kendra and Melissa and Steve Affairs and David. Uh, that's going to be coming to the board here soon. That revised our development agreement. Kind of shooting for the moon on some projects or ideas I mentioned. Uh, economic development plan. I'm strengthening this Thursday here in this room at 6 p.m. And then Dr. gave me some good news about PNA and plugging the band those last two wells over there in Lot B. So we have a lot that we could. Uh, Hopefully, advertise for retail commercial business. To piggyback on that, what about the uh, wells that were talking about drilling in that northern section that you were trying to? Uh, That's still in a negotiation, just north of town in right. that field. And Adarko has not got back with me on what is happening with that. The last time we met, um, I was trying to talk him into moving that, that pad site to the farthest north side of that 63 acres. We can develop on the south side, but I have not heard back from them yet. Ever since the transition with Occidental, some projects have been on hold. So, I have um, Kelsey's contact. I might contact Kelsey. Sure. Um, yeah, that'd be great. A uh, couple things for the future. Um, next month in January, after the holidays, I do want to schedule a study session just. To revisit most of this board uh, is fully aware of the water supply plan. We talked about that briefly during the budget. Uh, probably bring Brad Hagen, our consultant, he's a water engineer, into that meeting. So, we again, it's the I call the other grill in the room water fund versus sewer fund. So, we don't want to forget about our water issues. And then in March, I chat with the mayor briefly today. <coughs> I'd like to start an annual town business luncheon, uh, kind of like the county does annually with all the towns that we would do with local businesses. By then, the economic development plan will be finalized. I uh, should have some more confirmation when Excel will do their underground this next spring on Main Street. Mainly, the, the main thing is to, is to partner with the businesses and get accurate information out into the community of what we're trying to accomplish and get their input on what we're trying to do. Because in order to be successful, in my opinion, for improving the downtown, some, some people make comments, we don't have a downtown. Because it's, it's not the most pleasant, no, no offense to me, it's in business, it's not their fault. But we have to work together. The businesses need to be incentivized to help improve their buildings, improve their business, and we need to improve the way to get to that business, sidewalks and streets, storm drains, so on and so forth. So I want to do that in March at some point. I haven't decided on the date yet. We'll talk about that in the future. That'll be different than the barbecue that we usually have in the summer. We'll still do a summer appreciation, but this will be more of a, a working lunch. Yeah, I, like, I like the building. And I hear comment. I read through all the comments today that the Steering Committee will go through Thursday night for economic development. And there's a handful of comments that you know, talk about, you know, the town's too restrictive. 
I don't know what that means. People need to tell me. The business needs to tell me what are we restricting? You? Is it our development review process? Is it our fees? The business license is twenty five bucks. I mean, it's cheap as crap. Mm -hmm. So I need to hear face to face and, and you know improve, make it better. So because mm -hmm. to me, before we attract new business, we should work with our current businesses to make sure that they're happy and we can help them out. That's all I have pending uh, coming to the session. Any questions for Mr. Angel? Let me have an add to our next year thing is don't forget about that emergency plan mm -hmm. thing that on the bar quick It's on my desk and it's a winter project, but yeah, you're right. That's why I do we this. We don't want to get caught up next time and be like, oh, we really should have done that plan we talked about after this huge thing that happened. Yeah, well, we, the board would adopt that. That's, a, that's more of an action plan in place for the board. And then, yeah. It's been years since we have updated the emergency management plan, and the people who did that with me are no longer around. So, uh, definitely need to get that information out to the community before we start doing tornado siren tests next April. So they know what to do. So now we can have the boxes and borrow it to go see the emergency. Yeah, I do want to take the board to see the EOC up in Greeley. Yeah. It's a nice tour, and we'd be impressed with how they manage operations in Will County. 2013 flood, the 08 tornado. So that'd be a good learning experience. Anything else? Well, we're doing the Christmas tree decorating on Sunday, starting at 1. If you guys want to come help. I could have Saturday, but I can't Sunday. <laughs> Are the towns providing the decorations this year? Is that what I'm reading? Yep, so Public Works uh, David got 10 60 foot sections of uh, uh, lights. The brand new lights to go on the tree. Yep. yep. And I'm going to go pick up a bunch of big ornaments. So, yes. Fire department will help you to the top. Yep, the fire department will be there so we can just get decorations to the top of the tree. And I don't know what we're doing about a star because the biggest one I can find looks like nothing on the top of that tree. <laughs> yes, so I don't know how to, if you look, the three foot and six foot stars are anywhere from 600 to $1,000 oh, wow. and up. They're super expensive. So, I don't know if that was That's what I'm buying the ornaments with. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Fire department will be there. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, we're going to have a big tree decorating on Sunday. So, we're going to have a big tree decorating on Sunday. So, we're going to have a big tree decorating on Sunday. So, we're going to have a big tree decorating on Sunday. So, we're going to have a big tree decorating on Sunday. So, we're going to have a big tree decorating on Sunday. So, we're going to have a big tree decorating on Sunday. So, we're going to have a and just so you know, Spencer, I did reach out to Madison and Bill Cohen. There's really no updates, no changes. It's okay. still under, you know, the, all the applications go to committee review, and I'm sure they have a ton of them. So yeah. I think it's March, yeah. is when the announcement is for the splash pad and renovation upgrade. So. Thank you for that. Hmm? Yes, sir. 6.30. 6.30. Nothing update right now, but did uh, Jess or Amanda reach out to you? I was contacting them today about the crafts, Christmas decorations. Okay. <clears throat> All right. I'll get in contact with them again. They sent me some options, and they're the ones that's going to have to approve them. So. Uh, what are you talking about? This is for the crafts for? For Christmas parade after Christmas mm -hmm. parade, they're doing crafts. Mm -hmm. Um, just making some decorations, cool. and they haven't decided on what to order to send to Mary yet. And they both were kind of surprised when I asked them to do so. <coughs> okay. Well, they might get something different. And that's next week? Yeah. If, it, yeah. if we don't find out soon. You get a bag of potatoes and toothpicks? Yeah. Speaking of the Christmas parade, Curtis, can you email me tomorrow like the details of what's happening?
going to be the community center, like the crafts from the youth community, and who's doing what. I know the Silver Strip Fur is going to do some food. Oh, I can tell you right now, but yeah, I'll email you. Email so. to me that way. I'll send out Everbridge. So next week we'll focus on that event with the fireworks. Sharon from Tri State confirmed they'll be here next Wednesday to set up the tubes and they'll set off uh, closer. It'll be next to the mud volleyball pitch because no one's over there. It won't be so far the way from the tour. That'll be at seven. That'll, and people love that. They really do that. Avery, could I come up to the podium real quick? So, Curtis Morton, 723 Goodrich Court. Uh, I was talking to Troy before the meeting, and I wanted to extend a public thank you to everyone between Troy, Public Works, Fire Department, everyone in town that helps with the parade. We couldn't do this on our own because the Silver Spur, you know, for, this will be the third year now providing food, which, by the way, they're doing sloppy goes on their freshly made buns. So, but just between all the groups and businesses that help out, all the volunteers that are going to make cookies for us, I'm like, thank you. <laughs> it's just so much of a relief not having to do this all on your own. And this has become a tradition. I mean, this is our sixth year now doing this. So we look forward to it. Mm -hmm. So thank you. Thank you. That's been a nice addition to the community. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I'll probably laugh because based upon the, the temperature, it goes slow or fast. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. That it's one true. year, like 12 below, when they zoom by. <laughs> <laughs> she was looking out the window and was like, wow. <laughs> And we'll light, we'll decorate the tree this week and we'll light it before the parade the next weekend on the 14th. Oh, that'll be great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the senior meal is the 12th. The 12th, yes. Which is Whitney. That's a Thursday. Thursday. Mm -hmm. So the board's invited to that. It's from 11 to 2, they eat at noon if you're able to make it. And then Friday is the town's party yep. at 6. Is that next week? This Friday. This Friday. Oh, so next Thursday is the senior. Next Thursday is the seniors. And then we'll have a meeting on the 17th. Okay. Anything else before we close into the executive session? All right. Yeah, we've got a motion to go into executive session. Okay. We have a motion, but we don't adjourn the meetings. We have a motion to go into executive session. Do we have a motion to enter into executive session? Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. All right. Thanks, guys.